We're going to start with the parts for the control arm support housing. So you're going to need two of these parts and one of these. We don't need to do anything to these just yet, so we'll set them to one side. This part here, we need to start bending it up. Once again, I'll grab your ruler to support it because it's quite delicate in places. Um, this bit here is, is easy and that one can bend upwards as well. That one bends up nicely. That one should bend towards you. Everything is bending up. When you get to this part here, just to avoid bending these bits too much, I tend to put a ruler over it and then bend it up. Do the same on the other side. There we go. It should look like something like this. Everything will be able to bend round. And this is going to come all the way round. These parts are going to sit on the top. And it's going to form a part that looks something like this. Now the next thing we need to do is take one of our syringes. Here we have one of our syringes. You'll notice that the exit tube is offset to one side, it's not in the very centre. And you'll find that goes directly into that hole. If you lie that down against that edge, fold that flap on top and then bring these flaps over. You can now squeeze it together with those two fingers and push these flaps down. You notice it's slightly out of alignment, so I can squidge and move things to get it lined up nicely. And the reason for that is that we want to get these holes lined up uh, for one of our dowels to go through. And another opportunity to use a dowel to help us, you can see that piece of card is in the way slightly. So if I push it and then put this through, that's going to help to support things while we glue this together. If you hold it on either side, take your glue gun, you're going to run some glue inside here, and then you need to squeeze these flaps down. Now what might happen is the glue might squeeze out of the middle here, and we don't want you to burn your fingers. So good opportunity to be able to use your ruler again to help you. Put the glue in and you can use the ruler to hold the flaps down. Squeeze the flaps down, squeeze it together and some glue is going to squirt out of either end. That's all right. We can either clean that off afterwards or earlier, depending how quickly these tabs dry. Now we've got to this stage, we can take this out and we can take the syringe back out for now. And we want to do exactly the same thing again with the other parts that we've got. We need to make up two more sets of this. So let's do that now. Finally, we've got these last two parts here that just need some work doing to them. Now these end up going over the end of the syringe. This T-shape allows the end of the syringe to fit in there very nicely. And that's what these are for. These are for creating a mounting point at the end of the syringe. But the first thing we need to do is fold these parts up. Notice there are two different sizes. This is the one that goes on the grabber arm, and this is the one that goes on the four bar linkage, but we'll come to that in a moment. Right, there's a few delicate bits here. This little section here is relatively thin on either end, so we need to be protective of that. So when we are scoring these bits or folding these bits, we just need to support them. So I would suggest that you take your ruler and put that across here whilst you fold these bits up. And if you fold with your finger towards, this, towards the edge here, as I've done it, it's gonna work better. That folds all the way over, and that one goes all the way over too. Turn it around and we'll do the other end. To secure them, if we put a tiny blob of glue just here and here. Not too much, because we need to keep this whole T-shape clear. Now we can just push those down. Just make sure they align nicely so we can still fit the end of our syringe into here. Repeat this on the other end. 
If you get any glue squidging out, pop this in sooner or later and that will actually clear the glue out for you. There we go. Now taking your ruler, if you squash along each of those lines, you can see the dashed lines. Might need to get an adult just to help push this down. But now this should start to be floppy. Now this is nice and floppy. We want to get this T shape to come all the way over to here. So we're just going to hold it on underside here, fold this over, and start to squidge it in. If necessary, use your ruler just to help that get squashed together. Now you can see it forms a nice hole through there, and that's where that's where one of our dowels goes. So this can now pivot. To hold this on, take one of your rubber bands, and you'll see what these parts here are for now. Four times should do it. And we need to do the same with the other size one. Next up, we need to take our tubing and cut it to length. Starting with the longer of the two, First thing to do is to thread one of these on either end down somewhere to the center just so it's well out of the way. Next take your first tube, squeeze it onto the end of here. This can be quite tricky to do, you might need an adult to help squeeze that on there. Get some water, I'm going to put this end of the tube down into here. Now start to draw the water up. You'll see there's a bit of an air bubble forming in the syringe. So go about halfway and then turn your syringe upside down like that. If you then squirt back into the tube it's going to push all of that air back out. See all the bubbles coming out. And now you can draw it back up again. Squeeze all that air down, all the bubbles keep coming out, get all the bubbles out. When it stops bubbling, you can now keep the end of the tube in the water Draw this all the way up. Don't go all the way. You want to go to about 10 millilitres. Now keep the end of your tube in the water. Get your other syringe. The one with the mounting already attached to it. Compress it all the way down. Dip the end in and get some water out. Again, you're going to see an air bubble in that. So we want to get rid of that air bubble. And the way to do that is to lift the syringe vertically upwards and squeeze it until the water dribbles out. Now do this somewhere where you're not going to make too much of a mess. Now with all the air gone in this one, you're going to want to draw this tube up all the way to 12. This tube, I'm going to squeeze almost all the water out, so there's just a bit of water remaining in the end of the nozzle. And then it's time to attach them together. You might need to dry your hands off to make this work. Now 
Now get yourself a cloth or something, dry off the end of these tubes, make sure everything else is nice and dry. Cardboard does not like water, it turns into porridge. So as long as we keep everything dry, we should be good. We now need to slide our cardboard bits back onto the tubes. I'm just gonna pull that through until we get to this end. And you'll need to rotate this round so it's the correct way. You'll find that the holes in here are on the opposite side to all the numbers. So take that as far as you can for now. Now if you get yourself one of your pre-cut dowels, put that through here, squeeze all the water to the other end, and then put this end on a hard surface, and then you're gonna to wanna to pull on here. And this is to pull everything together. If You also wanna support this end here. What you don't wanna do is be pushing on these tabs because they'll get crushed. You might need to find an adult to help you do this. Cardboard's gonna do a really good job making sure this all stays attached. And there's one more thing to do, which is to put a blob of glue just in these back corners. And not too much, because too much will uh, melt the tubing and then we'll have a, a wet disaster. So a blob there and a blob there. Do the same on the other end. So this is nearly ready. This is the long hydraulic circuit. The bits that are remaining That T-shape again fits straight over the end. Another one on the underside. And then you're gonna wrap your rubber band round as many times until this is nice and tight. There we go. That's held on securely. Now we should be able to push that one out. That one goes in. There we go. Do the same thing with the smaller components and then you should have two things that look like this. Now it's time to connect our levers onto our hydraulic system. For this, we're gonna need a couple of short dowels, they're the 30 millimeter long ones, as well as a couple of rubber bands. For the short system, to connect our lever, we're gonna need a 30 mil dowel, two O-rings and two fiber washers. Insert into the end, so it just pops through. Match that into there. Push the down through and then push it all the way through to the other side. Make sure you've evened it up on either side and then you can install your fibre washers and O-rings. Do the same thing on the other side. There we go, that's all connected together and pivoting nicely. We need to do the same thing with the other system, except we need to add two extra rubber bands to it. This is the, the long circuit this time, but there's a slight difference. So let's take our dowel, start threading that through. You now wanna hang off one rubber band Then slide this part in. Get your next rubber band ready. Drop that into the gap. And then push that all the way through. Okay, so we should have two rubber bands hanging off that dowel. And now to add your fiber washers and your O-rings. making sure it's nice and even on either side. Now it doesn't matter which way round we attach this because this can rotate in here because of the rubber seal inside. So don't worry about that. That's the two completed circuits, including the two levers. Now it's time to install them onto the main body. The short system goes onto the left hand side. Here's your lever and it's gonna go this way round. I'm going to slide that over here. 
Um, just put it on part way to begin with. Then lift up this end. And now you can rotate this round till this is uppermost. And then you can slide both parts home. Now to put on your fibre washers and your earrings. Now you want to get one of your remaining 65mm dowels and that is going to start to insert through here. You want to bring this up through the centre and you want to rotate this until the tubing sits upwards. It wants to be sat up like that and these parts are uppermost. Push them down into that gap. Pull that lever back. Take one of your other remaining 65mm dowels and insert that through the side. Finish that off with a fibre washer and an o-ring on either side. We now need to attach the lever on the other side, so let's get that done. Same thing as before, you're going to put one half of this on. Uh, but here, we're going to take one of our rubber bands, put it over there for a moment, and pop that on. Now get the rubber band and pop it over the top. See that, the rubber band, the rubber band goes up and over and on top of the dowel. Now slide this along. You'll need to shimmy the rubber band at the same time. Put your other rubber band on. And finish it off with another fibre washer and a ring on there. That's all working. Now to assemble the top end. At the front end, we've got this part remaining. We now get our grabber, and you find this should slot into here really easily. Just push from the rear side. Make sure this lifts over here. Now, what we might want to do at this point. It's just take your ruler, just squish the very edge of this so that this arm here can travel across here easily. So if you just run your ruler down that edge, just to create a little bit of a ramp. You'll find that should now slide over there really nicely. Now we can take our two parts here and install them on. So we're just going to compress this up by pulling that lever at the back back. We should be able to start to drop this onto the two pegs. There we go, and that should now work. There we go.